My name is Hilda and I'm a Customer Engineer here at Google Cloud. Welcome back to the technical series for startups. We're web creating a series of videos for technical enablement for startups to start, build, and grow their businesses successfully and sustainably on Google Cloud. We've been on an absolutely amazing journey with you in this build series where we have covered various topics from infrastructure, data analytics to machine learning. Just last video, we did a deep dive on the Security Command Center. And now that you have an understanding of how you can build using our services on Google Cloud, in this video, we'll look at how you can effectively manage your environment with all the services using Cloud Task and Cloud Scheduler. I'll be covering an overview of Cloud Task and Cloud Scheduler on how it works, its use cases, as well as how we can combine it together. We'll then wrap up with some of our customers' success case studies on how they're using the services on Google Cloud today. And without further ado, let's get started to learn more about Cloud Task and Cloud Scheduler. As we move our monolithic application to microservices that are easy to build, maintain, and upgrade, we often find ourselves having to manage various components of our architecture from high volumes of notification, data ingestion, to triggering workloads. We should be able to have a service where we can offload the work to the background, one that you can organize and control for quicker response times and smoother interactions across services to help you focus on what truly matters for your business instead of having to worry about all these background tasks. How we can do this is with services such as Cloud Task, where you can easily create new queues and offload any asynchronous tasks, giving you a distributed task queues that you can integrate with any of your applications. Task are pieces of work that you can perform independently outside of your main application workflow. And these offloaded tasks are added to a new queue until it's successfully executed. This could be as simple as executing tasks asynchronously for new user registrations, having the user complete a certain task, and then finally sending a welcome email. Diving into some of the benefits how Cloud Task can help you with is for long-running processes, it can often tie up some of your high-performance computing power, affecting your application's performance. With Cloud Tasks, tasks are executed asynchronously, helping to reduce latency. And by utilizing resources more effectively, this can also help to reduce costs in the long run. Cloud Tasks can also help with timeouts and build requests by configuring retry parameters, which are important for handling transient failures. It also has a reliable delivery by handling task duplication and at least once delivery. Also, for release and incident management, you can control the execution with rate limiting by setting the rate at which tasks are dispatched, the maximum number of attempts, and the minimum amount of time to wait between attempts. If you have any resource capacity issues, Cloud Task can also control the delivery flow rates for you to meet your quotas. It is scalable and fully managed with popular client libraries for your choice. You can enqueue tasks using the REST API from any language and anywhere. Your task can be executed on the App Engine or any HTTP endpoint that can securely reach Google's Kubernetes Engine, Compute Engine, and Cloud Run or on-premises systems using industry-standard authentication. With easy-to-integrate APIs, Cloud Task can be a great way for you to simplify your architecture. You simply add tasks to the queue and Cloud Task handles the rest. Cloud Task also uses identity and access management for access control, where it's configured at both a project and queue level. For instance, you can grant access with limited capabilities to create and add tasks to queue but not to delete a queue. You can also switch on and off cloud logging for your queues and to ensure that you are properly monitoring your cloud task queues to detect abnormal behavior, we have various predefined task metrics like number of tasks in a queue, API calls, task attempts, and delays for you to monitor. And here are some scenarios you can use cloud task for as a request buffer where you can manage resource consumption, system maintenance, or inter-service communication. This would be useful for constraining resources in terms of cost or quota limits like big query slot quotas or even on-premises databases where it doesn't scale as well. With Cloud Task, the queue acts as a buffer where you can posit or you can queue higher priority tasks and ensure that your big query writes are under the quota limits for any of your data processing pipeline. Another way would be as a deferred execution, which is generally used to offload heavyweight compute, serverless threading, and to defer the execution of a large number of jobs. 
In this scenario, we have an example of deferred jobs where task queue are not used in front of the application but within it through execution control. Putting things into context, you could be an online retail store where once your user shops, analytics drops on user clicks are being queued to run, stock level updates are being added to a task queue to write to Firestore, and using cloud functions as a notification service to send follow-up emails for the sales campaigns next month. These are just some example use cases for you to try out today. On the other hand, we have Cloud Scheduler, which is our version of a fully managed cron job service. Cloud Scheduler helps to trigger jobs from batch jobs to big data and cloud operations. You can configure your jobs to retry in case of any failures or errors, and can set a maximum number of retries to add resiliency. Cloud Scheduler also lets you automate your retries and execute a job in a fault-tolerant manner by deploying to different regions so that you can eliminate the risk of a single point of failure as seen in traditional cron services. It also provides reliable delivery with at least one delivery guaranteed to your job targets. Similarly, it supports targets such as App Engine, Cloud PopStuff, and HTTP endpoints allowing jobs to trigger to Compute Engine, Google's Kubernetes Engine, and on-premises resources. It also uses the standard authentication for you to invoke your schedules in a secure fashion. Similarly, Cloud Scheduler also uses identity and access management for access control. Cloud Scheduler also publishes logs at the start and end of each execution for you to look up the actual execution times and check job configurations. You can also integrate Cloud Scheduler with VPC service controls, which currently support Cloud pops up targets for you to set up a secure parameter to guard against data exfiltration. Now, let's dive into how simple it is to set Cloud Scheduler. Now, let's go through an example of setting up Cloud Scheduler. When we head over to the console, you can type Cloud Scheduler in the search bar, select it, create a job, and we can define the schedule here. You can go ahead to name your job, select the region of your choice, as well as any descriptions necessary that you might need, as well as the frequency. So over here, you would have to specify the schedule in cron format. Say for instance, every Friday of the week at 9 a.m., you need this job to run, as well as specifying the time zone. You can go ahead to click continue to configure the execution and the target supported, we have three types, which is HTTP, PubSub, as well as App Engine. For the purpose of this demo, we will be using PubSub targets. We can go ahead to specify the topic we want to trigger the message, as well as the message body. Click continue, and over here, you can configure optional settings, such as retry configs, where you'll be able to set the maximum retry attempts duration or more of your choice, like what we have mentioned in the earlier parts of the video, and you can go ahead to create this scheduler. Upon creation, it will bring you to this panel here where you can observe and manage your scheduled jobs for an overview on when it was last run, whether the result has been successful or not, when is the next run, and under the actions, you'll be able to force a job to run, as well as view logs like what we have mentioned earlier. And there you have it, it's simple to get started on Cloud Scheduler. Some sample use cases include scheduling database backups. You can run a Cloud Scheduler job to periodically trigger your database backup function on an hourly basis through the SQL Admin API. The database then generates the exports and saves it to Cloud Storage. Having database exports on Cloud Storage lets you create a robust disaster recovery plan where you can export it to a different region, import it to other Cloud SQL instances or other MySQL instances to ensure a quick recovery in the event of any incident. Another use case would be for data ingestion. You can set up Cloud Scheduler to trigger data flow batch jobs into BigQuery using the data flow templates. We have guided tutorials where you can follow this architecture along as well. Not forgetting, here's an example that describes the architecture for a serverless content render, which is commonly seen in social media and gaming industries. These scenarios often involve serving high volume of pre-structured content, 
where the data incorporates data from external sources, and that data can be then processed or combined before being incorporated into custom structured content. In this architecture, you can see how the high volume serving path is highly decoupled from the content preparation pipeline, resulting in cost efficiencies as well as greater architecture resilience. Moreover, content forms can be based on several variations such as user type, geographic location, or queries of the external data. We can then use Cloud Scheduler to schedule variations to capture new data from external sources as it updates. Content variations are then scheduled as tasks within Cloud Tasks itself. To capture content and schedule rendering, we can leverage Cloud Run to fetch the external data which is then stored in some form of intermediate storage such as data store to allow multiple rendering variations to consume data in the architecture, reducing redundant calls to the external data store. This processing of each data fetch task results in multiple rendered variations for each content type, where it's then scheduled as a further set of tasks within Cloud Tasks for the next stage. The content is eventually rendered and stored in Cloud Storage itself where it will then efficiently be served through Cloud CDN to end-user web and mobile applications as shown in the image. A full write-up of this architecture is available in our architecture reference page for you to deep dive into it as well. And bringing it back to how our customers are using Cloud Task and Cloud Scheduler today, previously in video 3 of our build series, we have covered how Arabesque AI uses Cloud Run to reduce their server costs. Additionally, they were also able to use Cloud Tasks and Cloud Scheduler for orchestration of their workflow and only minimal effort is spent on operations, helping them to reduce cost, latency as well as improve productivity. With that, I hope this video has deepened your understanding of Cloud Task and Cloud Scheduler. If you're interested to find out more, feel free to check out the additional resources provided in the descriptions below. And that marks the end of the segment of the startup journey with our builder series. We have kicked off the series with our launch video, startups programs to Firestore, analytics with BigQuery, how you can use Spark and Hadoop with Dataprof, streaming processing pipelines with Datafilm, data visualization with Data Studio, ML APIs, Vertex AI, API management with RPG, security deep dive, and today, we have learned more on orchestrating our workloads with Cloud Task and Cloud Scheduler. And that concludes the build series. We are excited to share more with you in our next segment, the Grow series, to help startups that have launched on Google Cloud to optimize and scale. And that's a wrap on the build series. Don't forget to like and subscribe on our YouTube channel and click on the bell icon to get notified when our new series begins. Thank you, and we can't wait to see you again.